<laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, All right, now get snuggled close to one another. <laughs> we are glad you're here this morning. As they prepare for that event, we're going to prepare ourselves to, to receive from God today. Uh, I want you to turn with me to the book of the Psalms, and we're going to look at chapter 25 of the Psalms, verse 4 and 5 is our starting point. Um, as I was asking the Lord to give me a message for today, I was asking Him to show me uh, what I needed to know. And of course, that, that song came in, Show Me Your Ways, O Lord, and yes. O God. And then yes. that scripture began to hit my head. You know, it says that in the Word. And, and as I began to pursue it, God began to speak to me concerning that. And so um, Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5, is, is, has that phrase in there. And that's going to be the title of our message, Show Me Your Ways. And so verse 4 says, in Psalm 25, it says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Verse 5 says, Lead me in your truth and teach me. And I want to just share some things to, today that God has revealed to my heart that I'm applying as well. Hopefully that you can apply certain things that, that you may hear today. But I want us to understand that what we're going about, we, this is a prayer. It's a, a cry out to God. And when we cry out these things to God, we got to expect God to do what he's, we're asking Him to do. And then we have to do what God reveals us to do. And so we have to do our part as well. And this is what this message is going to be dealing with. Our part, when, we, when we're asking God to do something, what is our part in response to that? Father, we are so thankful that you're going to reveal good things to us today. Lord, my heart's cry, just like many in this congregation is, show me your ways. Teach me your paths. So Lord, I pray that today you will give us the anointing and the illumination of the Holy Spirit on our mind to comprehend truth and to acknowledge it. Also, touch our ears to hear what the Spirit of God says, that we can hear the, the shepherd's voice. And Lord, we also ask that our heart will be fertile ground in which the Word takes root and it grows. So Lord, touch us all today in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember on various occasions, all through my Christian experience, especially as a young man and uh, even as a young married man, crying out to God, you know, Lord, I want to know your ways. I want to know your will. I want to know your purpose in life. You know, and I've cried that all through my teenage years. And, you know, and I can see how, in, in retrospect, I can see, like you have probably, probably can do, how God has heard that cry. And, and when you look at the, we always seem to look at the cry and then the end result. And we, don't, we forget sometimes that there's a middle part of that. And I think that's what we want to focus in on a little bit today is that middle part. Because I remember in retrospect when I cry out that kind of prayer to God and I begin to search the Lord with all my heart and I begin to put myself in a place where God can really minister to me, uh, I had to go through some things. I myself had to experience some things that would get me to that from point A to point B. Yeah. You know, we're not a Star Trek church where you can just beam me up, Scotty, or beam me over to this particular place. It's going to take some effort on our part to get to the points that we're asking God to work in our life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, without struggle, there's no victory. You know, so we're going to be struggling and, and getting to those points. And so when I look at this particular psalm, it's a cry. The whole psalm is really a cry of, uh, out to the Lord for deliverance and forgiveness. And But he starts off, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. That's my heart's desire. That's yours today because that's why you're here. Uh, we're not here just to uh, be social. We're here to hear what God wants us to hear. We're here to, to grow, to develop, and to pour out our hearts. You know, not one of us in this place is perfect. I mean, we were, we're, we're, we were created imperfect and we'll be imperfect until Jesus comes or until we're taken out of this world. Uh, because you have to deal with the flesh. I have to deal with the flesh. And this is the, this is the little things that kind of eat at us all the time. Does that mean the flesh is victorious over us? No. We just remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians that this tent, can't wait to shed it. Can't wait to get rid of it. And there's a purpose for that. 
But in the meantime, I want to cry out to God. God is working in my life. God wants to do more in my life. And as he moves in my heart, I'm going to cry out to him. And all of us are crying out for something from God today. I don't, it doesn't make any difference what, what age we are or how long we've been a, a follower of Jesus Christ. There is a hunger that continually gets and moves in us to draw us closer to God. Uh, I've been a Christian since about nine and a half, ten years old. And I've been striving every year of my life to get closer and closer to God. And the closer I get to God, which I understand that my God says in His Word in Hebrews that my God is a consuming fire, the closer that I get to the flame, the less Tom is there. Because the fire is burning away the old flesh. The, bird, the fire of God is removing what needs to be removed. And so when I get to that point where I'm face to face with God, I am going to experience something I've never experienced before. I will be in His likeness. That's going to be an exciting time. So I am thanking God for the furnace experiences and for the trying of my faith and, and for the, the working of God in my life because it, according to Romans 8.29 it says I'm being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. So when we cry out that prayer, God change me, God work in my life, God teach me your ways, then we got to be expecting God to start doing what we're asking God to do. And it, it, it's not going to be an easy thing. And all of us have certain expectations, though. Isn't that something? God, I want you to work in my life, but here's how you do it. <laughs> I've said it. You've said it, too. Don't lie to me like that. You know, we've all said, God, we want you to work in my life. We want you to do this. And uh, I want to follow your ways. But, Lord, let me show you how I want you to work in my life. Let me tell you how you want me to work in my life. And that's not how God works. The scripture says this in Isaiah 55, verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways, saith the Lord, your ways, uh, your ways my ways, says the Lord. God, follow God. All right? Amen. Follow God. You know, forget about your way. Forget about your thoughts. Because you're, you're, we, we're, we're dead inners. Did you know that? Without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we're dead inning all the time. Without God leading us and, follow, uh, and directing our path, we're always off the trail. You know what I'm talking about, because we've all, we've all experienced this. This is a part of Christian growth. This is part of our learning experience as a Christian. But we have one cry also that we need to put in there. Lead me in your truth. Lead me in your truth or your word. You know what it says? Look, Show me your ways, O God. Teach me your statutes. Lead me in your truth and teach me we must know the word of God and rightly divide it. 2 Timothy 2, 6, 15 says, Study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. So if we're saying, God, teach me your truth, then we're going to have to be a student of the truth. Oh, yeah, you, are. Yeah. you know, uh, truth doesn't just pop into your head mystically. Say that. It's applying what you're hearing, what God says, okay. reading it to yourself, and then God reveals that to you. And he, you know what? You know what the truth is. Jesus said, "I am the way, the life, and the truth. No man can come to the Father but by me." So He is the truth. We must follow Him. So, the follow Jesus. There we go. There's our theme of life as a, as a Christian: following Jesus. Look at the life of Christ. Look how he lived. Look how he walked. Look how he moved among the people. Look how he mingled and ministered among the people. Are we becoming that same kind of individual? Are we acting like Jesus? Is our response to life situations like Jesus? You, we can argue the fact and justify it and say, well, he was God. Yes, he was. But then Christ lives in you. He lives in me. Amen. If Christ be in us, who is our hope of glory, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives us strength. Amen. You know, we can't justify our, our actions and say, well, uh, it, it was just a, a moment there. You know, I have moments too, but, you know, I can't, when I stand before God, I'm going to drop my head because I can't stand and look Him in the face and in the eyes and say, I'm perfect, I'm not. But I'm seeking the one who is. I'm seeking the one who is. 
We want His guidance. I don't know about you. I've always wanted God's guidance in my life. Since I came to that knowledge of Christ at the age of nine and a half, ten years old, I've always asked God to give me some wisdom and some guidance in it. So, Lord, show me how I do it. So, I want you to turn with me a few verses here in Psalm 5, verse 8. Just turn back a few pages in the Psalms there. In Psalm, verse, uh, uh, Psalm 5, verse 8, we see some things here that might help us. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your path straight before my face. Yeah. Two things, righteousness and straight. Yeah. All right? <laughs> righteousness and straight. That you know the path that God takes you on is not going to be a crooked one. No. <laughs> and what I mean by crooked, it's not going to be a deceptive path or a path that's in and out, living your own life, living in sin. Yeah. Living your own life, living in sin. The straight path that God leads us in is going to be a path of righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things will be added or given unto you. So God first, His kingdom, straight path. So righteousness is a, an action of life. I'm going to correct myself. I'm going to live according to the Word. And then I'm going to walk the straight way path. We call it the straight and narrow. Remember how that used to We'll walk the straight and narrow. Well, get back on the straight. Get back on the, the straight and the narrow. Narrow is the path that leads to life, but broad is the way that leads to destruction. Yeah. 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 So we got to get in the place where we're walking in truth, walking in the straight and narrow, and living for God the way He wants us to. There's a message found, you can find it there in Acts chapter 9, where Paul was stricken on the road to Damascus and uh, he was blinded. He went to a man's house and he was resting there. And in the meantime, God began to speak to a man named Ananias. He said, Ananias, I, I want you to go to this place and, and uh, you to lay hands on uh, my servant who is uh, Saul of Tarsus. For I'm going to show him great and mighty things he's going to do for me. And, of course, you know, God gives the address. You know what the address it was? Straight Street. There's a sermon in there. Guarantee it. If you want to be free from your sin, you've got to be on Straight Street. Yeah. Amen. Eyes opened up on Straight Street. So, anyway, I just want to share that with you. Turn with me to Psalm 27. Verse 11. Again, talking about guidance. Lord, lead me. God, show me. God, direct my heart, my path. And in Psalm 27, verse 11, the scripture says this. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path. Lead me in a smooth path. Now, there's that form of straight, but, you know, <clears throat> I don't know about you. Sometimes our paths are like bumpy roads, potholes. Anybody have those lately? <laughs> Anybody got caught in a pothole? Spiritually? <laughs> God takes the potholes and he covers them up with his forgiving asphalt. You know, and he makes your path smooth. Where you and I can walk on a straight and smooth path following him. That's, see, that's the key. Following the Lord. That's what, that's what the cry is. Lord, teach me your ways. Lord, show me how to live for you. Lord, give me truth. Lord, lead me in the straight and narrow way. These are all things that we are crying out for. So God's going to direct us. Psalm 143, verse 10. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Lord, here, guide me. I'm in a, we're like Isaiah, most of us. Did you know that? We live in a crooked and perverse world, generation. Isaiah cried out in chapter uh, 6 there. He says, I, li I live and dwell among a people who profane your name. They're unclean. Lord, I I'm among those people. But you know, the Lord is speaking to us today. You know what he's going to do? He's going to take the tongs off the altar with a coal fire in there, and he's going to purge your lips. He's going to purge my lips. He's going to purge your mind. He's going to purge my mind. He's going to do what is necessary, because Isaiah says, Lord, I want to be a, a holy man before you. I want to, do, I want to be, do your bidding. I want to speak your word, but I need some help. <laughs> and God's going to help us today. God is going to help us. In order for us to be shown His ways and to be led by His Spirit, we have to be, this is a hard word for a lot of people, and I'm one of those hard people, teachable. Because remember, we already have our expectations. We've already got our idea how God's going to work. We've already got it already set in concrete that God can only work in my life one way. 
and it will be one way his <laughs> whether you're teachable or not he will right. have one way in his in our life he'll knock us off the donkey like he did Paul or we can fall before him and let him do what he needs to do in our life help us Lord yes help us Lord <laughs> so become teachable teachable that means allow the word of God to really take effect in your life Amen. allow God to to really begin to work and reveal those things that are needed. Verses 4, 5, 8, 9, and 12 of that Psalm 25 says, Teach me your paths. Teach me. Verse 5. Verse 8 says, Teach the sinner. I'm the sinner. Teach me the sinner. A humble. He, the, the humble, he teaches his way. You know, when we're proud and arrogant and we're stubborn, that's not teachableness. That's proud. You know, and the Bible says in Proverbs is that pride comes before a great fall. Haughty spirit. Right. Right. And so if we're not teachable, we're saying to God, you can't teach me, God. <laughs> well, God says, well, I'll show you how I will teach you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the hitting the bottom of the pit, so to speak. That's hitting the stumbling block along the path because you haven't put the light of God in your, uh, you're not being led by the spirit. You're, you're being led by your own action and desire. Verse 12 of Psalm 25 says, Who is the man that fears the Lord? Yes. Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. And there's our starting point to following God. Here it is. It says, Lord, I fear you. You know, do you fear the Lord? I mean, do you honestly say to yourself that, God, I know you're up there, and I believe that you are the God of all gods. And then we continue living our own life. Is that fearing God? No. It's acknowledging who He is. One who is Almighty God and then saying, I want to live like you want me to live. That's the fear of God. Yeah. Yeah. It's not living your own life. It's living the life that He wants you to live. And to rebel against that is something you don't want to go into. Uh, you can't go the path that God wants you to walk if you don't follow His way. He already has a path chosen for us if we follow Him. And He wants us to choose Him. When you choose Him, you choose His path, and it's a right path. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 9, verse 9 says this, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wise. Or wiser. Teach a wise man knowledge, he'll be wise. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Teachableness. That's what I want us to do. Teachableness. I have the hardest time. I'm a great procrastinator. Oh, me too. <laughs> Do I have a fourth, a fifth, a sixth out there? <laughs> All of us are maybe procrastinators. Um, you know, we, we're, and we're, we feel like we're unteachable because, and that's what they call us. You're unteachable because you procrastinate. You wait to the last minute. <laughs> when we should have had the opportunity had it done a long time prior. <laughs> we need to become teachable. Instruction. Instruction. Put away the procrastination. Quit putting it off and let's get in line. You know, there are certain things that I, I'm, I'm 55 now and so I am learning some great truth in my middle age. <laughs> that it, it is not wise to procrastinate. Be honest with you folks. I've come too far to lose it now. I've come too far to ever allow the things that I thought were so important to me in my early years or <laughs> things that my flesh wanted. I thought they were important, but they're not that important anymore. Amen. Amen. Because I, I want God to teach me Him. I want to end up looking like Him. I want to end up being in His presence. I want to end up being His man for the hour. You know, I don't want to be just someone who just kind of floats down the stream, but I want to be someone that God can use and make an impact on someone's life. You know, I think so many times we settle for mediocrity. Didn't say it quite right, but you know what I'm talking about. We, you know, we're, we're not all there. We're just kind of easy. We're just kind of floating in. But I want to be someone that God takes a hold of, gets a stick behind and says, go for it! Go for it! Go for it! And dig. You know, I want to be that kind of man. Where God pushes and, and drives. Jeremiah 42 verse 3 says, the Lord your God may show us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should do. 
Lord, show us how to walk and show us what we need to do. Show us what we should do. Show us how we should walk. These are the cries. Teach me, Lord, how to walk. Do you remember how it was when you were with your children? Or maybe you can remember even when you were walk, trying to walk. You know, at first it was kind of, you know, you're stumbling, you're falling, but there's always someone there to pick you up. Remember? You've seen it. Maybe aunts, uncles, moms, dads, you know, your kids, you know. You're picking them up. They, they walk a step and then they fall. They walk two steps and they fall. Well, the walking aspects, you know, the desire is there. It's just knowing how to walk. This is what God's Word is trying to teach us today. How to walk. You know, how to get from point A to point B according to God's Word. I have to be teachable. Tom has to be out of the way. Tom has to let go of himself and, and, and let God work in his life. Now you can put your name in there. Don't just talk to me, alright? <laughs> put your name in there too. You know, you have to walk. You have to talk the walk too, you know. Yeah, and... Uh, for Isaiah 28 verse 6, uh, 26 says, For he instructs him right in right judgment. His God teaches him. I want that to be said of me when people yes. say, God teaches Tom what he needs to do. Yes. The old saying that you can't teach a dog, an old dog new tricks is a lie. Because look at this old dog here. <laughs> God is working in my life, teaching me something new every day. I'm thanking Lord for that, yes. I thank the Lord every day that He is teaching me something new about me and about Him. Amen. And I'm seeing that, man, Tom is a mess and God is right. <laughs> I see that every day in my life. You know, God is continually showing me how I should walk. And it's not easy because I have to give up myself. I have to let go of some things. And some of those things are just like, you know, dear to me. You know what I'm talking about. There are some things that just, oh, I can't let that go. I've had it so long. And God says, you got to let it go to go to the next step. Thank you, Jesus. you know, let it go. And, and let God lead you in that right path. And once we have learned, once we have learned truth, I think this is important. Truth. 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 The truth is Jesus Christ. The truth is His Word. Hallelujah. When we learn the truth from God, learn these things, when we become teachable, see, when we become teachable, then it is easy for Him to guide us in the way of truth. Because right now, when we're not letting God lead us and guide us, then we hit the truth, it's, it's hitting that rock. It's coming at you, and you're not getting it. When you let God's truth comes into you and takes control of your life, then when you come across something that's truth, it's easy to walk through it. It's easy to walk in that truth because you're not going to be hitting it like a hard rock. Um, so we got, I want God to lead me in the right path. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to bend to His truth. I'm going to learn, submit myself to Him. I'm going to become teachable teachable guide me and being teachable means he's going to guide us in all decisions how many are making decisions today did you know you make a decision every tenth of a second probably Thank you, Lord. <laughs> well, I ask myself the question what kind of decision am I making Sometimes I feel like taking off my jacket right now. But then you yeah. see the why. Then I never get a decision. See, all the decisions are running through my head. You know? Uh, making a decision. God helps us make the right decision. Thank you, Lord. You know, we don't know all the times what we sh the decision we should make. But God makes the decision. Here's what he says. Yeah. Psalm 32, verse 8. Yeah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. I'm so glad God is looking yeah. down on me. And he knows my thoughts. Amen. He knows my thoughts because remember I said already my. He says um, in Isaiah he says my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God give me your thoughts. Help me make the decisions that are going to glorify and magnify the name of the Lord God Almighty. Is the decisions I'm making going to be profitable for the kingdom? And those are those are questions I ask myself sometimes. You know, in which I should ask probably more. 
you know, all of us, you know, is, is my decision going to be profitable for the kingdom of God? Am I going to receive what God has for me by the decision I make? How many of us just make crazy decisions, even religious decisions, without even thinking about it? You know, we just, we, we become flippant in about it because, oh, it's just, the, that's how we talk in church. Maybe we should become more conscientious of how we should talk in church. How we should make decisions concerning our relationship with God and with others in the body of Christ. Um, the truth is that going, not only help us make decisions, the truth is going to guide us by wise counsel. There's safety in the multitude of counselors. That's what the book of Proverbs says. Some of us just have a close friend. And sometimes that close friend is really good to talk to because it's like that sounding board. And sometimes that close friend is like iron sharpening iron. But it's true counsel. Because the, the rightness of a friend is better than the kisses of, a, of an enemy. You know, so I'd rather have a friend that will tell me up front, hey, this is where you got to be, Tom. This is what you got to do. And then have somebody come, good job, Tom. And then turn around and stab you in the back. You know, so wise counsel. Psalm seventy-three, verse twenty-four. You will guide me with your counsel. I have a close friends here and there. I people I talk to, but you know who I talk to every day, maybe most of the part of the day, yeah. is yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Throughout the course of the day, I'm always saying, God, I need help in this today. Lord, I need some direction today. Right. Lord, um, you know, um, <laughs> why well, I, I I I got a list of problems. You want to hear them? No, you don't. <laughs> but I talk to God about my list. Yes, amen. I mean, it's not always written down, but man, I got that list is right here. And uh, God, I need counsel on how to deal with that list because my list has people on it that are close to me, yeah. that I'm friends with. How am I going to handle that list with these individuals, with these people that are dear to me? How am I going to help them when I can't even help myself sometimes. Amen. Amen. So I need the counsel of God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The truth not only leads us in making decisions and, and wise counsel, the truth will guide us in the midst of uncertainty. We say this, the, 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 the thing, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. That is more true than not. Hallelujah. That is more true than not because when we are uncertain about certain things, about it, well, we're if we're uncertain about anything. Right. Let's, let's go to the scripture. Let's go to Isaiah chapter uh, 42. Isaiah 42. Because there are probably days where you and I are like the blind man. There are probably days where we don't know where that path is going to lead us. Yeah, yeah. But listen to what the scripture says in Isaiah 50, uh, 42, verse 16. Talking about truth guiding us in the midst of uncertainty. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in, the path, in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. Ooh, thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you. you know, that, that gives me hope for today. Yes. Because I don't know what the end of my day is going to be like, but man, God said he'll help me like a blind man along the path. He will take me along the, the way that I need to go, and he'll become the light in my darkness, and uh, he will make the crooked places straight. And I like the best thing about it is he takes me by the hand, and he says, I'll never forsake you. That's right. Ever. Glory, glory. Lord, I'm with you always, Jesus said in Matthew 28. Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So, Lord, thank you for holding my hand. Hold to the nail scarred hand. Hold to the hand of Almighty God. Hold to the one that will knows the way that you do not know. Hold to his hand. The truth not only helps us in making decisions and giving us wise counsel and leading us in the midst of uncertainties. 
the truth gives us divine illumination in, a, in Luke chapter 1 verse 79 we have this scripture to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace <clears throat> illumination is that means to brighten up or to make to reveal to open up where you could see I don't know about you, but I remember the day, even though I was young, I was in sin, the darkness of sin. I was a PK, did you know that? That's a preacher's kid. <laughs> My dad was a minister. My grandfather was a minister. And we talked about that, about genealogies today. It doesn't make any difference what my genealogy is. I want to tell you this, though. No matter how much I was surrounded by people who had faith in God, until I came to know Jesus Christ personally, I was in darkness. Wow. Went to church all my life. I was dedicated to church. You know, all these things we can say, say, and the, oh, how religious and how nice it was. But until we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are in darkness. Amen. Amen. And when that darkness is removed, then we can know that we're in light and we can see things a lot clearer. I was in the shadow of death. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So I was in darkness. I was in death. But Jesus came who is the light of the world. And he illuminated my life with his presence. He revealed to me my need of him. My sin. And he revealed to me his forgiveness. I received that. I received light when I received his forgiveness. And no longer do I fear death because no longer am I in darkness, but I have light that shows the way. And then when death does knock on the door, I'll be able to see the path across over. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Truth guides us into all truth. Turn with me to John 16, 30, 13. John 16, 13. The Spirit of God leads us into all truth. 16, John 16, verse 13. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, has come, He will guide you into all truth. All truth. All truth. Wow. So every day as we submit ourselves to God, He has promised to lead us into all truth. When you say, well, pastor, I, how come I'm not learning it? Because you're not teachable. That's what it boils down to. Because we're not teachable. And moldable. We're afraid that if God begins to work in our life, we'll have to change it. That's the whole reason you need to know truth. It's to change. It's truth that changes us. It's truth that perfects us. It's truth that brings us to that image of Jesus Christ. Remember what this, I said it earlier, Romans 8, 29, we're being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ, who is the truth, the life, and the way. Turn with me to John 14. We've already quoted verse 6. But look at verse 21. And I like this passage of Scripture because when you look at being shown the way of truth and you're being shown the paths of righteousness and you're the path of knowledge and you're, you're coming to know who Jesus Christ is this scripture comes to life for me yes. in verse 21 it says he who has my commandments and keeps them remember that's teachableness right there see yes. you gotta be teachable he who hears my, has my commandments and keeps them that means that person's been teachable it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. Oh, hallelujah. Now we can stop right there and dance around yeah. the floor a little bit and say, hallelujah. You know, we can, we can say that's great because God loves me yeah. and the Father loves me because I keep my, his commandments. But here's the last part that I like. And Jesus said these words, I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Yeah. Now where manifest is to make, is to say, to make known. Mm. Thank Teach you. me your ways. Show me your paths. In other words, make it known to me. Yeah. And Jesus is the one that I need to know. Make himself known to me. That's, what, that's my harsh cry. 
that Jesus will make himself known to me every day. I hope that's the cry of your heart today. Lord, show me your ways. Lead me in your right paths. Lord, show me how to be like Jesus. Let's ask God to do that. Father, we are in this place today because we love you. We admit that we're not perfect people. The enemy of our soul harasses us day by day, trying to cause us to stumble and fail. But Lord, our hearts cry is, Lord, show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Lead me in all truth. Lord, I know that's the prayer of all that are in this congregation today, to be men and women of faith, people of the word. So Lord, I pray that today you will grant them that desire, that you will lead them in the right path. You will show them your ways and you will lead them into all truth. That they can become the people that you've called them to be, a light that shines in darkness. So, Lord, together, together, we serve you. Together, we love you. Together, we will touch people's lives. Together, we will stand for the cause of Christ. And, Lord, we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, please. If you know the song, sing it. Linda, would you come and help, Gwen? Hallelujah. Make this your prayer. Make it a prayer today. Lord, touch my life. Impact my spirit with your presence. Praise you, Jesus. to you to work holy mildly in their lives we're in the end times we don't know the day or the hour but we know by the time and the season that you're very near so Lord help us to take the word and apply it to our life today and as we leave this place today Lord help us to be students of the word and to be a light that shines help us to be more like Jesus in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Greet each other in Christ before you go.